welcome back folks to more Bloodborne Chalice Dungeon Painting. This week we're going to do a longer video and that's going to be all four hunters from the expansion. So we have one, two and three hunters. We do have a fourth but I completely forgot to show it on screen. But hey, there is a fourth one there. You'll see him later on, I promise. So we prepare as normal with a jar for our clean water, one for our dirty water, some kitchen roll to wipe off any excess paint and a wet palette to do all of our mixing onto. Pop a sheet onto a well-soaked sponge and make sure you get rid of any wrinkles with a nice flat edge using a card or something similar. With that, we're ready to paint. Like we always do, I'm going to be Zenithal highlighting over a black prime. So to begin, we just need to prime all of our hunters with some black. Then we can move on to highlighting them and I'll do that by doing some Zenithal highlighting. Pop down a mat that I don't really care if it gets messy or not. Grab an airbrush, some thinner and some cleaner. Pop some thinner into the cup along with some white ink and we can begin highlighting. We're going to be spraying from a top-down angle, making sure that all of the higher points are brighter, falling off into all the darker points and all the undersides should be pretty much black, giving us a really strong, stark contrast. And there we go, that is all four hunters nicely primed and ready to paint. So we will start off with the Beast Claw Hunter. It's a pretty cool design and we're gonna start off by painting the robes with some snake bite leather. It is the nice mid brown contrast paint, perfect to be able to add in some highlights and shadows on afterwards and it reacts really nicely to the zenithal highlight underneath. With the robes done, I'm gonna turn my attention to the wraps and pop some skeleton horde contrast paint onto those. And there's also wraps on his legs as well, so well worth popping some skeleton horde contrast on those. And onto the beast hands, I'm going to be popping some Garagak Sewer, which is a nice deep, rich brown contrast paint. And then start adding in some Rattling Grime, which is a sort of like really dark, black, grimy, browny kind of contrast paint. And that'll be our sort of like dark, shadowy regions towards the base of the robes, along with any sort of like shadowy points that are sort of like sitting under other parts where shadows would form most. Then for the tentacles, I'm kind of just basing the colours off of what's on the cards. I'm going to grab some of this Caliban green, which is a really deep, rich green, and then just painting that over all of the tentacles, so then we can start highlighting them afterwards. Then we can move on to some gunmetal in some Iron Warriors and just paint it over the weapon, and also the little vials that are on the front. Then I can grab some Calibite green, just to sort of give us a bit of variation of green onto the tentacles so they're not so one note. Then I can move up to some Lauren Forest, which is a sort of like really nice muted dull kind of green. And I'll kind of just target each sort of like ringlet, I don't know what you want to call it, like the ringlet of the tentacles. I'll just target the center of each one of those to give us a bit more interest and definition. Then I'll grab some Zandri Dust, which will be our sort of like main wrap colour. And I'll just go over the centre of each wrap that's sort of around the legs and around the weapon, making sure I'm not painting over the entirety of it, but just giving enough so that it is prominent, highlighted and blending out into the Skeleton Horde contrast below. Then I can just use it as a highlight for the robes as well, making sure I'm just sort of targeting the edges and then just sort of blending it out into the snake bite leather and then into the rattling grime lower down as well. It's a nice highlight color for this tone of brown and it just gives us a good stronger definition of contrast between the lighter parts to the darker parts as well. Then I'll take some storm vermin fur to give us some brighter hairs on the fur and I'll just sort of like slowly dot it around different parts before I grab some wraith bone which will be our sort of like main brighter highlight colour and I'll just go over more strands of hair just to give us some brighter fur tones within that so it's not just sort of one tone of fur and also wraith bones are really good bright bone kind of colour so perfect to highlight our wraps making sure that they're just centralized within the Zandri dust that we applied before so that it is blending out nicely into the other tones and not just one color. 
we get a nice gradient from the bright wraith bone all the way down through to the skeleton horde contrast paint on the bottom. And I can apply some wraith bone as well to the robe, same kind of principle, just making sure it's right within the center and the far edges and just highlight what we had underneath. Perfect, and that is our Beast Claw Hunter done. Time for the second one, which is the Chicago Hunter. It's got the sick blade and it's got the little pistol. So same as before, we're gonna start painting some contrast over our Zenithal highlight, starting off with some Basilicanum Gray, and this is going to be the main color for the cloak. And making sure we're getting the front side, the back side, and I also wanna get the legs painted with it as well. So then we can move on to the snake bite leather, which will be our main leather color. And I'll be painting the coat with that, along with the shirt underneath and the boots as well. They're all gonna be our nice brown leather tones. Then some black legion contrast paint, basically just kind of act as a black wash. This will be applied to the sort of bottom of the cloak and all the shaded areas as well, just to give us a bit of shadow within the basilicanum gray that we applied before. Then I'll grab some Cadian flesh tone, which will be our main flesh tone, and I'll paint in the little face underneath the hair here with that, keeping it nice and thin so we're still retaining most of the shading underneath. And there we go, that is our little face painted in. I'm just gonna grab some Basilicanum Gray and pop it over the hair as well. Once we've done that, I'll grab some Mornfang Brown. This is going to be our mid-tone for the brown leathers. And then I'm just basically going to apply that to the sort of like edges and blend that towards the center of the browns, keeping it nice and thin so that it does blend quite nicely into the snake bite leather. From there, I'll grab some Zandri Dust and this will be our even brighter tone. And I'll mix that in with some Mornfang Brown so that we have a sort of like nice half and half mix. And again, right within the center of the Mornfang Brown, I'm just gonna keep accentuating those brighter brown tones. And then once I've done that, I'm just gonna take a 100% of Zandri Dust, not mixed in with Mornfang Brown, and then just highlight those edges with that. Then following the same principle with that, but with the greys, I'll take some Eshin Grey and I'll just start targeting all the sort of raised edges of the Basilicanum Grey. And then I can start adding in some White Scar, which is a nice layer paint from Citadel Paints. It's thinner, so it's easier to keep the whole thing thinned out. And basically I'll just slowly start mixing that into the Eshin Grey and start building up brighter grey tones and slowly start building up more and more highlights within the cloak. And then keep blending between those tones so we get a nice transition between the brightest points higher up to the darkest points lower down. And then we'll do the same thing for the hair as well. To highlight the face, I'm going to grab some Kislev Flesh also working some white into that as well so that we keep brightening up the face. Kind of hard to see the details because it's so tiny, but that's what I'm doing there. Then I shall grab some lead belcher and this will be our little gunmetal tone, which will go on the buckle, it will go on the sword, and it will also go on the pistol as well. Then I'm gonna grab some Bugman's Glow, which is a nice pinky, richy flesh kind of color. And I'll use that as a sort of shade towards the bottom of the face as well. Then to highlight the metals that we've painted on, I'll grab some Necron Compound and I'll start dry brushing that onto all of the metallic parts that we've done, just to give us a bit of highlighting to that. And I can grab some white and I can just start highlighting different areas, bringing out those highlights on the metallics, bringing out some different tones to the hair as well and just giving a bit of extra bump to the highlights on the cape as well. And with that, we've got a second hunter done. So we can now move on to our stake driver hunter. This guy is pretty much all clad in brown leather, so we'll start off with some snake bite leather and make sure we get pretty much all of his outfit coated in that. I'm gonna get the jacket, the shirt coated so that I can then move on to grabbing some Garagak Sewer Contrast Paint, which is the darker of the brown contrasts. And I'll be using that paint to paint in his trousers. And I'll also be using it to paint in his little hat as well. 
so that we have a sort of like nice two-tone brown leather thing going on with this hunter. The Garagak Sewa is also a good shade tone for the snake bite leather as well. So I'll pop some onto the sort of like lower parts of the jacket. Then some nice burgundy in Word Bearer's Red for the scarf. And whilst that's all drying, I'll grab some Iron Warriors and I'll dry brush that onto this monstrous weapon that he has in his right hand. And also dry brush it onto the pistol in his left hand. And with a very fine point brush, I'll pop some of this metallic onto the buttons on his shirt too. We'll pop some Null Noil onto the metallics as well so that we get some nice glossy contrast to everything. And then whilst we're waiting for that to dry, we'll move on to some Mournfang Brown. Again, this is our nice medium middle brown tone and we'll use this as our sort of like main mid-tone for the jacket, the shirt and just blend it out nicely into the previous contrast paints that we had before. Once we're done with that I'll grab some Zandri dust and this will be our brightest part of the highlights for the brown leathers, making sure I'm just targeting the center points of the Mornfang brown that we just applied, using it to accentuate edges, edge highlighting, all of that good stuff to make that really pop within the leathers. And I'll do the same for the hat as well. Then we can move on to some Eshin Grey, which will be our sort of main mid-tone for the trousers as well, following the same suit as before. Grabbing some white, mixing that in, and slowly start progressing up through the brighter tones, making sure that we're blending out to the darker tones, so that we generate a nice contrast between the light and the dark. Then we can move on to some Necron Compound, which will be our highlight for the metallics, and I'll just dry brush that onto the edges, making sure that we're sort of still keeping those recesses nice and dark where the Null Oil has settled in. And grab some brighter metallics and some whites as well, and just brighten up some areas, edge highlight things, make things sort of like stand out a bit more. I can also grab some fulgurite copper to add some rust to things as well, just to make things seem a bit more interesting and less just pure gunmetal metallic. You know, we can add in different variations of things. And for the face, same as the other hunter, I can grab some Cajun flesh tone, paint his face in. Grab some Mephiston red, which will be our highlight for the burgundy scarf. And then to highlight the face, I'll grab some Kiss Left Flesh again. You can't really see it because his hat's blocking it, but highlighting the sort of like cheekbones, chin, nose. Grab some white, mix that in with the Kiss Left Flesh, and you can call that hunter done as well. And we're on to the fourth of four, which is the Rifle Spear Hunter. This is a real steampunk looking dude, clad in dark gray and brown leather armor. So to begin with, we'll grab some Skeleton Horde Contrast Paint. This is a nice brighter tone compared to the other brown contrast paints that we've used. And we're gonna paint the top half of his body with this, which works really nicely with Basilicanum Gray, I find, because it gives it that kind of like worn leather look. So it blends nicely from the light brown to the dark gray. I just think that these two colors work really nicely together. And then I can just sort of like blend between these tones. So it sort of like generates that nice worn leather to new leather kind of look. Then I'll pop some Basilicon Grey onto his hat as well, so that it sort of matches with the rest of him. And grab some Garagak Sewer or Snakebite Leather, whatever you prefer. Paint his legs in so that it sort of breaks up that grey look to him. Then I'm going to take some more Snakebite Leather and pop it onto the handle of the spear. Grab some Lead Belcher, which is a nice gunmetal metallic and paint the sharp pointy end of the spear. He also has some armor plating on his wrists and on his shins, so I'll use some lead belcher to dry brush onto that as well. With that done, I can move on to the Mournfang Brown, which will be, again, that will be our mid-tone for the sort of skeleton horde that I've painted on, and I will sort of make sure it's nice and thin so I can blend it between the skeleton horde and the Basilicanum Grey that we'd applied previously. Then I'll use it as a sort of like leathery mid-tone on the grey parts as well, keeping it nice and thin so it sort of like blends well with that Basilicanum Grey but still gives a bit of leathery look to it. And then some Zandri dust will be used to highlight the upper edges where I've got the Mournfang Brown and the Skeleton Horde Contrast. 
and then also mix it in with some Mornfang Brown so we have a bit of a mix to sort of generate those highlights that we have lower down as well. Then I'll take some Eshin Grey and I'll start highlighting his little hat with that, mix in some whites with it as well so you can just slowly start boosting up those highlights. Then I can apply even more white to it just to really give us that real brighter highlight to things. Edge highlight onto the hat and just bring in some real strong highlights to it to give us that nice contrast from light to dark. With that done, we'll paint his face in again. We've got some Cadian flesh tone here. We'll just base his entire face with it, keeping it nice and thin so we're still keeping hold of that shader that's underneath. And with that done, I'm gonna grab some Kislev flesh once again, because that's gonna be our highlight for the face, targeting the nose, cheeks, chin, brow, everything that you can't really see too well because it is very tiny. And then he does have these little steampunk goggles on, so I'll just pop some black onto those just so you can see them standing away from the face. I'm gonna grab some Null Oil to pop over the metallics that we have. And then once the Null Oil has dried, I'll grab some Necron Compound just to give us that real bright shine to the metals. And then when we're done with that, I'll grab some more Fulgurite Copper and that's gonna be our rusty look to it. Pop it onto the metallics, onto the shins, onto the weapon, onto the wrist, anything that you may want to look a bit more rusty. And that's it, that's four hunters done. A fair bit longer than last week's episode, but you know, we had four to do today, so pretty good going. And there they are all together. If you did enjoy today's episode, please be sure to drop this video a like, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and drop me a comment below. If you do fancy supporting the channel in extracurricular fashion, you can check out my Patreon. The link is on the screen, the link is in the description. If you want to join the gang of people that are on screen who show their deep support to this channel, and I thank you all dearly. But that's it from me. Make sure you stick around, keep an eye out, because we've got more Bloodborne stuff coming your way as we try and make our way through all of these models within this expansion. Thank you very much for joining me. Have a great rest of the day and I'll see you next time.